So this is my rim brake carbon clincher wheel that I blew up during Ironman Coeur d'Alene two weeks ago on a long descent, ultimately resulting in a DNF. I've been obsessing about why this happened ever since, trying to figure out, was it me? Was it the wheel? Are they all like this? And today I want to share with you some data as well as let you know why I will never be riding carbon clincher rim brake wheels again and talk a little bit about my warranty experience with Boyd, which was not great. So let's dive in. Let's establish a baseline real quick, because if you ask Reddit, are carbon clincher rim brake wheels safe? The answer is yes, they're very safe. The only reason they might not be safe is if you're an extremely heavy rider riding down a steep and long mountain pass on a hot day. And at that point, maybe you should go with a different wheel, but for everyone else, totally good. So for me, I'm about 165, 170 pounds. It was a fairly hot day, around 85 degrees at the point of failure. Looking at the data, we can see that the descent that I was on was around one mile long at negative 5% grade average the whole way because it's a highway. And if I cut, you know, 20 seconds off the beginning of the descent and 20 seconds off the end of the descent where after the failure took place, the descent was three and a half minutes long. And what happened? Well, on this descent, uh, I was on the brakes harder than I should have been because I was having wrist issues. I was also having grip issues because I had gotten oil all over my uh, grips. Basically, what happened is the braking track of this wheel overheated. This was the rear wheel. And uh, as it overheated, it also caused the tube to blow up. And when the tube blew up, the wheel or the tire actually blew off in a couple of places. And on this side, in three or four places around the brake track, the carbon is actually delaminated itself. So I'm not here to say that these wheels are unsafe for a variety of reasons. I'm not saying that. Um, I also accept that I was on the brakes definitionally harder than I should have been because I experienced a failure. The reason I'm making this video is to share that I was not expecting that failure to happen. The internet has built me a framework, which is that only heavy riders on extremely long, steep descents on extremely hot days where they're on the brakes all the time will ever have a failure. And that's not what applied to me. I'm a mid-weight rider. I was also using butyl tubes, which are not the really thin tubes, and I was not riding the brakes. I was actually pulsing the brakes. So as I can see it, one of two things happened either. The wheels did not perform up to expectations and the failure that I happened took place earlier than it should have, or the wheels did live up to expectations and the limit is actually quite a lot lower than I thought it was. And for me, it doesn't matter which one of those two is the actual reason. I'm just not going to be comfortable riding carbon clincher rim brake wheels anymore. So. That's basically where I'm at. I'm already going to get a new road bike, which of course will be on disc brakes. I generally like my felt IA and I didn't want to have to get a new one. For my upcoming race, I'm just going to use aluminum clincher wheels that I've got, just a spare set. Of course, there is the option of going with aluminum wheels with a carbon fairing. I don't want to put more money into a rim brake bike right now, but if I were to be buying new wheels and I couldn't get disc brakes, that's probably what I would do. You're going to pay a weight penalty because it's essentially a full aluminum wheel with a carbon fairing, but you get that aluminum brake track, which is probably apparently safer than a carbon brake track. So that's where I'm at right now. But immediately following this, before I got to the conclusion that I'm at right now, I decided to see if Boyd wheels had a crash replacement policy and they do. And it turns out it's actually extremely generous and I want to read it to you. So it says that anybody who owns a Boyd cycling wheel set, regardless of age, condition or where they bought the wheels is eligible for a crash replacement at a reduced price. Our goal is always to get the customer back up and riding again. If some sort of damage occurs, it would be $300 for a carbon wheel. The crash replacement price includes a new rim, spokes, nipples, and labor to rebuild. It's a new wheel built on the old hub. And then it goes on to say, the crash replacement is available at any time for a wheel in any age, any condition, and for any reason. Whether it's a crash or you ran over the wheel with your car, we will get you back up and riding again for a very reduced price. And at this point, I was like, man, 
that's fantastic. I can just get a new wheel and be back on the road. So I promptly sent them an email and was told, hey, Justin, thank you for filling out an RMA. Due to the age of your wheels, your best option will be to use our trade-in program. This would give you 20% off the purchase of a new wheel set. Let me know what questions you had. And I was like, I have a question. To which they replied, we don't recommend rebuilding on previous generation hubs as there are no spare parts available if something should happen. If you have a local builder, we can sell you a rim at a crash replacement price for them to build if you will like. To which I replied, I don't have a local wheel builder. Would you be able to rebuild the wheel using my existing hub if I accept that there aren't any replacement parts available if it breaks? And that was 11 days ago, and I just didn't get a reply. So apparently, no, apparently they're not. Um, I don't know, kind of a bummer to have this fantastic crash replacement policy on your website and basically be unable to honor it. I get the spare parts thing. They can't magically make spare parts happen. I totally understand that. I feel like the fair thing to do in that case with that claim on your website would probably be to just give me a new hub, maybe. I don't know. Or alternatively, kind of feels like a letdown to still want to charge me $300 for just a replacement rim, knowing that I'm going to then have to get nipples, spokes, and labor from a local wheel builder too. So I don't know. It is what it is. At this point, I'm not going to pursue that any further because like I said, I've chosen to not I, I don't want to replace these wheels and more so I don't want to sell these wheels because even if I did do the crash replacement policy and you know, got a new wheel and threw it on that bike and then was like, I'm going to get a disc bike and I throw that one up on Craigslist. I don't feel comfortable talking to anyone who wants to buy that bike and telling them that it's a great bike, because if they ask me why I'm selling it, the answer would be because I'm not comfortable riding it anymore. I don't want to give that answer to anyone. So when I eventually sell that bike, it will be with aluminum clincher wheels. And if the person wants to get carbon clinchers on their own, that's going to be up to them. For me, I'm not comfortable riding carbon clincher rim brakes anymore. I'm just going to move to discs. It's going to be expensive. I'm normally someone who prides myself on, you know, not needing the newest and latest and greatest just because it's out there. But in this one, when it comes down to a, a comfort and a safety thing for me, that's where I'm going. With that, I'll see you next time. Bye.